So, Ryan, are you taking a little breather here? A little breather for what, Judy? Uh, Ryan, today is Garden Palooza Day. And we have more information on Garden Palooza coming up next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time and welcome to Garden Palooza Day. It's happening till 3 o'clock at Bauman's Farm and Garden. And we're starting to show out today at Garden Gallery Ironworks where they're giving away this amazing potting bench. So make sure you stop by the Garden Time booth to enter to win. So not only will Garden Gallery be giving away this amazing potting bench, they'll have a booth at Garden Palooza where they'll be selling arbors and trellises, planters and garden furniture. And while you're at Garden Palooza, don't forget to come and see Ryan and I at the Garden Time booth. You can enter to win this wonderful potting bench, but you can also enter to win garden books, gift cards, and even DRAM's watering tools. And make sure you visit the Garden Palooza website before you come to print off some valuable coupons to be used at the show. Speaking of DRAM tools, coming up on the show today, we'll show you how they actually make them. We'll also show you how to pick out the perfect clematis. But coming up first, some of the great plants at Garden Palooza. Well, it's Garden Palooza Day, and I'm with Carol from Out in the Garden Nursery. She's one of our vendors. And Carol, of course, you have this wonderful selection. And we just got to get to it because you have so many here. I do. So I'm a, I'm a grass girl. This is the only one I have right now. This is a Calamagrasses. Um, I love them because they're early. I mean, this has been outside all winter, and oh, it's already up this far. Gosh. This one is different than some of the other Calamagrasses because it's actually a late summer fall bloomer. This is Caspian. Ooh. And I do have some other varieties. They just need a little bit more time. Full but sun? Full sun, part shade, okay. super nice. Um, flowers hold for a long time. They, for being a deciduous grass, they're almost year round interest. Nice, nice. And then what's behind it? And then I have a couple lilacs. Ooh. These are the shrubby or the dwarf lilacs. Um, one is, this is Miss Kim, this is Pabellin. They are fragrant, 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 fragrant. You can see they're full of buds. They're not quite blooming yet. Um, they're big, dense plants, four to six feet high and wide, maybe a tad bigger, but they're definitely shrubby versus the upright, like some of the other lilacs. Nice. Oh, it is lilac season almost. Yeah, it's Excellent. getting, yeah, they're coming really fast. Great. And then I have a group of Sambucus, which they are nice flowers, but, um, especially the black lace has big pink flowers. Um, these have white flowers. This is a nice, this is, um, I just blanked Lemony on its lace. name. Lemon lace, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is gold towers, and this is more obviously more chartreuse than gold, but they make really nice foliage color, um, texture, contrast. They all can be pretty big shrubs, at least six feet. Sometimes this one we can get up in the eight to 12 foot range, but they take pruning really, really oh, well. That's nice but they're know. a nice background plant. Um, and they're, they're really a nice group of plants behind your perennials or nice. in your mixed borders. And full sun? And they are full sun, yes. Okay. And let's go to shade. Yeah, and then back to shade, to full shade. This is an Akuba. <laughs> you could just kind of finish blooming. They don't have very exciting blooms, but they have this beautiful foliage. Nice. They'll take dry shade. Um, they're slow. They'll get up to six feet eventually, but it takes a while to get there. And they just give you this great pop of color all year round. Beautiful. And then what's this one? That's so pretty. This is on. This is a uh, one of the oak leaf hydrangeas. This is little honey. Ooh. It gets three to four high and wide. Um, it actually wants some sun to keep the gold, okay. but too much sun and it will burn. Okay. And the other thing, it's these have come out of it now, but they get really great fall color. And if it's a mild winter or a sheltered location, you have dark red foliage all oh, winter because they don't always drop their leaves or they drop them late. Um, but it's just a great color that has a little um, cone-shaped cream flower Lovely. in this in the summer. Lovely. And now let's go into perennials because you've got perennials. a bunch of those here too. Look at this. Uh, so, mum? So Excellent. This, this is something new. This is my husband's venture. Yeah. Um, it's hardy mums. And nice. what we have found is that you want to plant your hardy mums now. You don't want to wait until the fall because the ones you're buying in the fall, yes, they're in full bloom, but they've been forced, they've been fertigated, they've been, they're, they've been babied, and they're not ready to get in the ground. Oh, they need fun. time mm -hmm. to get established. So get them in the spring, get them in the garden by June, and then you'll have a good hardy plant. Full sun, good drainage, and they'll bloom for years excellent, to come. Excellent, excellent. And then what's this in bud here? We have a little fun one. This is actually a native. This is our native camas. Cool. It's just about ready to bloom, so we'll have a really pretty blue spike. They'll actually take wet winter, dry summer. Um, it, they're, they're really a lovely thing. We just have a big patch of them. They'll naturalize nice. beautifully if you just leave them alone. 
and it's, they're just a fun something different for the garden. Excellent. And so many different ferns. You got a really nice yeah, collection. Yeah, these are all asplenniums. They're different kinds. So this is a spleen wart. It gets a whopping eight to ten inches high and almost as wide. It's evergreen. Actually, all of them are evergreen. Great. This is a dragon's tail, not quite as big, but has a really great little texture. These are both heart's tongues. This is the regular heart tongues, and this is the cristata with a crispy edge. Beautiful. They're going to get a foot, 15 inches. Um, they're not a real big plant, but they're really nice. I call them the ferns that don't look like ferns. <laughs> um, but they're, they're a really beautiful addition to the garden. And we have just a little more time, so okay. do this one and then do the primrose. Great. All right, so this is bezia, and this is another great part to full shade plant. It's evergreen. You can see the little bit of the purple tones for mm -hmm. the new growth, but it also does that in the winter. So it's just a nice little mound, puts up a little flower that's not terribly exciting but it's nice and mass, mm -hmm. but it's just a great evergreen plant for shade. And then all these beautiful primroses. Then we have some really beautiful primroses. They're all doubles, um, again, part shade, um, early, early blooming, great color, easy. Uh, they're just wonderful plants. Uh, well, you know, it's Garden Flues a day. You have to come out to Bauman's Farm and Garden, see Carol, see all of our vendors, and really come and have a fun day. Carol, thanks so much. You're welcome, thanks for coming. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival is on! Enjoy 40 acres of blooming tulips bursting in color. Food, crafts, kids' activities, and so much more. Online ticketing only at WoodenShoe.com. The 38th Annual Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, now through May 1st. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Dram for Lawn and Garden, available at garden centers near you. Garden Palooza is back. Join us on April 9th at our new location at Bauman's Farm and Garden. See over 30 plant growers and garden vendors. There's free parking and free admission. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 9th at Bauman's Farm and Garden in Woodburn. Dram watering tools have been in business for over 75 years. They're a great supporter of the gardening community and of the Garden Time Show. Recently, our producers, Jeff and Therese, got to see the Dram Factory in Wisconsin and see how these American-made tools are produced. Well, the start was because my father was a florist and inventor. Most of his inventions were for um, the florist industry. His brother was a large a uh, cut flower rose grower in Chicago. He needed a nozzle that would put out lots of water gently. And that's what the water breaker does. It puts out all the water you can put through it. It adds the air to it as it goes through, so it adds oxygen to the, to the soil also. I would go with him as a three-year-old testing this to get, get the right kind of um, pattern. Everybody started using it and the more people, the greenhouses used it, the more saw it, the more they wanted it. So um, this is basically made the same way it was 80 years ago. There was a, a rose grower, a, a medical doctor, I think he was out in the state of Washington, maybe in Seattle. He wrote to my mother saying, I just love your water breaker, but I need to reach in three feet. <laughs> so that's when we decided we better make a handle. It was called the Handy Reach Handle. Producer Therese even had a chance to put a rain wand together. It wasn't as easy as you would think. Hey, we're gonna make a wand. 
So as we talked about before, when we saw the wands, the aluminum tubing before it was anodized, these are now anodized your favorite color blue. So because these don't have a seam in them, we can actually put brass fittings inside, expand the brass in here, and actually make it twice as strong. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the comfort grip on. And this is actually closed cell foam. It won't hold water and it won't get all slimy and algae because the foam can't hold the water, it's closed cell. What we do is we use air pressure to blow this up like a balloon and just push that down gently, all the way to the bottom, just push it. Isn't that a great sound? The next thing you're gonna do is we're gonna put in the garden hose fitting. Now this is brass and the reason we use brass is because it won't corrode with the brass garden hose end or it won't corrode with the, the brass hose bib. What you also find out is brass is much stronger than aluminum. And we're gonna show you why that is in a little bit. Just put it in there quickly. There you go. And we use the brass instead of the aluminum is when anybody holds on to a water wand or as we call them rain wands, and they want to pull the hose across the yard, they use it as a lever and they go like this. All that weight and stress is on this joint. An inexpensive one, like we talked about with the thin tubing, the lightweight tubing, they just roll the tubing over and the nut pulls on the aluminum. And you can literally pull the nut off an inexpensive one just by dragging the hose across the yard. So this joint actually will take up to 900 pounds of force before you can bend the nut and dislodge it. And the next part we're gonna put in is the, the male portion or the end where the water comes out and all the nozzles can be screwed on. So one of the problems again is we wanna have this brass tailpiece and it's gonna be inserted into the aluminum and then we're gonna use this machine again to expand that out to make a sealed joint. Now every single component we've used so far is made in the United States. So the tubing comes from North Carolina the brass fittings come from Ohio. We actually make the brass valves in a screw machine house in Michigan and we do the assembly here. And then these water breakers are molded and you saw them put together earlier today. And they're from here in Wisconsin. So when you screw that on the end, actually we need a blue one. When you screw that on the end, you finished your rain one. It all comes down to quality. Dram tools are made to very precise standards. Testing is key to maintaining that quality. So our engineering staff is very innovative and as you'll see in some of the videos, we've come up with some pretty in interesting pieces of equipment to torture the products and give them real world use in an in-house fashion. Some of the best testing and engineering done at DRAM is actually done by our customers. If you hand a rain wand to someone who is working in a commercial greenhouse and they're dropping it on the ground because a customer comes in and needs help, they're not gonna gently set it down, it's gonna go down because the customer comes first. And they're gonna use it eight hours a day, seven days a week, drag it around on the end of the hose, and they torture our products. And some of the best lessons we've gotten in engineering is by our customers using and abusing our products. DRAM has a huge line of watering tools and hoses, cutting tools, and natural and organic fish fertilizers as well. Quality matters. You want to make the world a better place, and if people are, are people are creating their gardens and the greenhouses are putting out, you know, plants that are making us happy and healthy, then we're part of that. Then that's a that's a good thing. That's pretty much all we can ask for. Your chance to win some of these great tools is this weekend at Garden Palooza. Stop by the Garden Time booth to register to win some of these wonderful watering tools. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. 
For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Garden Palooza is back. Join us on April 9th at our new location at Bauman's Farm and Garden. See over 30 plant growers and garden vendors. There's free parking and free admission. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 9th at Bauman's Farm and Garden in Woodburn. It's Garden Palooza Day at Bauman's Farm and Garden, and I'm with another vendor, Kristen Van Hoos from Hydrandis Plus. And Kristen, you have a beautiful selection here, but you probably have so many here. Of oh yes, it's hard to choose. And definitely. So I will. There will be quite a few options here at Garden Palooza. Excellent. This is just a fraction of what Excellent. I have there today. Excellent. So what do you have? So I have I have a serrata problem, as we all know. <laughs> um, this is a serrata called Tierra. It's a blue lace cap. Um, what I love about the serratas is that they have fall color, nice. red fall color. Mm. So it's a plant for all seasons. Looks that is different. good. Oh, definitely. And then I have a, it says Platt's Dwarf. It's a climber. It's one of, I bought it as Schizophragma, but I really think it's probably Animala, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's beautiful. a beautiful plant. <laughs> it's got a little bit smaller leaves than your regular climbing hydrangea and a much deeper serration Ooh, in the beautiful. leaf. But the white bloom is very similar, a white lace cap type bloom. Oh, how pretty. And this one looks a little bit bigger. Yes, now we're <laughs> going to talk about a, a macrophylla. This is called Niedersocken. It's one of my darker blues. Oh, pretty. Yes, so your traditional blue hydrangeas. It doesn't have any beds quite yet, but it should bloom. One oh. of my favorites. Excellent. And then uh, over in front of you, I have Summer Frost. Aww. It is a cross between macrophylla and serrata. Oh. But the fascinating thing is in the summer, the leaves start to turn yellow. So you walk by it, this time of year it's nice and green, uh -huh. but by summer, it's all yellow. Interesting. Yes. I've never seen that. Yeah, it's from Ozzy Johnson in Georgia. He developed it. Very cool. And, and I think there might even be a leaf or two that have some yellow splashes starting. We'll have to look for oh that. Oh my gosh, that is, sounds very yeah, interesting. It is interesting. And then I have a big white, I mean, I'm sorry, big blue um, souvenir de Presidente is, and it has buds on it yeah. too. It's one that new, blooms on the new growth. Oh good. Kind of like the all summer beauties of the world. Oh nice. So it has buds as well, but big and blue. Oh beautiful. I, we love those. Yes. Kristen, you know, there's a lot of new gardeners out there, and just for some reminders, we're going to be taking these beautiful plants home, so what should we do? So planting, um, for hydrangeas, there's some sun lovers, and then there's shade lovers, mm. and most of the ones we love are the shade lovers. So the serratas, um, the, the macrophyllas are going to be more shade loving, and that means morning sun, afternoon shade. Mm -hmm. um, the climbers, in general, can take a lot of sun. Yeah, there's a couple like the schizophragma family, which is not as much, but the rest of them can take a good amount of sun. And then there's a, a couple families that are full sun loving and prefer more sun, especially around here. So that's the arborescence family, which is the smooth leafed. And Annabelle is probably the most popular okay. one. Um, and then there's the paniculatas, which are the cone shaped ones and the corsifolias, which are the oak leaf types. So those all can take more sun. And we'll be pretty very clear on our labels Excellent. at Garden Palooza, oh, so that's people good. will know. Excellent, thank you. Yes, and so planting, it's kind of like a regular shrub. I like to plant it about even with the soil line. Um, make it a pretty good sized hole just so the roots don't have to work so hard to get through some of our hard clay. <laughs> and amend it with some potting mix or something looser. Yes, but they've all been fertilized, at least here. 
so they should be fine for the year. Excellent. Yes. I, those are really good tips. Yes, good. Yes, pruning uh, is always a big question. Mm. So we have a, a, on our online catalog, we have lots of pictures and I believe I have a video link on our website Perfect. too for pruning because that's the number one question when it comes to hydrangeas. Of course. Hard and then to for tips, you know, we're going to buy some, we have some in our yard. And so can you give us some tips what you do this time of year? Sure. Um, so you can do light pruning on most of them. Um, it kind of depends on the type of hydrangea that it is. I usually just take off the old blooms at this point mm -hmm. if they're still on there. Okay. It's added some uh, protection from freezes. So mm. that's why it's good to leave them on if you didn't prune them in the fall. Okay. Um, and then amendments and fertilizer. Okay. This is a great time to do that. Uh, I recommend a balanced time release fertilizer. Okay. Uh, we sell a 1288 that we really like and use in our own garden. Oh, excellent. And then if you want to do any changes to the colors. So at this time you can change the blue, get more blues with adding aluminum sulfate. Okay. Or get more pinks and reds by adding garden line. All right. And all that information too is in your catalogs and yes. on your website. Yes. Yeah, you do have such a wonderful catalog and all kinds of information. And you can talk to Kristen here at Garden Palooza because you always have questions and you can look at all the beautiful held ranges that she has here um, for you today. Kristen, thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. Celebrate family and make new memories. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival is on. Food, crafts, kids' activities, millions of blooming tulips. Online ticketing only at woodenshoe.com. The 38th Annual Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, now through May 1st. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong wind, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. Garden Palooza is back. Join us on April 9th at our new location at Bauman's Farm and Garden. See over 30 plant growers and garden vendors. There's free parking and free admission. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 9th at Bauman's Farm and Garden in Woodburn. Well, I'm out here at Bauman Farms. I'm with Brian. And Brian, Bauman's has been here a long time. Yeah, since 1895. It's really cool to kind of be a part of the family business. Although sometimes I joke, I haven't really gone very far in life. <laughs> That's right. You're, you're, you're still here. You know, the house, you know, it's getting a, This is overall. literally the house I grew right. up in, Ryan. I really haven't gone very far. But honestly, there's no place in the world I'd rather be. Um, I love that this house is where I grew up and it's part of the farm. It's been here for a long time. Right. And you guys are, you know, you're rooted in, in the community. Yeah. Here and y'all, in another company that's been rooted in is Espoma, yeah. and you guys have carried Espoma products, and you know we're very familiar with a lot of the Espoma, you know, fertilizers Absolutely. over the years. Yep. But they've expanded. Um, we are so excited. I mean, every customer that buys a plant from Bauman Farms, we suggest their Biotone. It's that great initial starting fertilizer to set your plants up for success and this year for the first year in the pacific northwest they have an entire line of premium potting soils raised bed mixes and compost and we have them all at bauman farms this year which, which is great to, to see and you know you have your flower bed here yes uh, you know as you know yes. as old old houses go old flower beds that need sometimes a little bit of reju rejuvenation exactly so when you're 
kind of trying to bring back a flower bed, get it excited. Um, we always suggest that you start with a nice premium potting soil, add a little bit on top, which we've already done out here. Um, we put a little bit of uh, spawnless potting soil right. down, Okay. but I always like to add a little bit extra boost to that. Um, I'm looking for a little bit, um, something to get those plants really started. And that's why we really go to their land and sea compost. Okay. Um, honestly, I've never seen anything like this. Um, there's a lot of different composts on the market. This has all of those mycorrhizae that we love, but also adding the crab and lobster meal to it. Um, has, it's great, it's wonderful. We've seen huge success and I think you will at home as well. Right. You know, and it talk says land and sea. And so you talked about how there's you know, lobster and crab in there and what does that do as far as you know the sea part it's goes? almost like adding a little boost of fertilizer um it's almost like um nitrogen is so important this has tons of nitrogen to it, it and it people get worried like that it has like a fishy smell to it you don't you don't see that right. at all which is great so all you need to do to apply this to a flower bed is just kind of spread over the top and i like to kind of work it into okay. the soil that way um that's going to be all around and then as the plants get started it's gonna pick up that nitrogen throughout the soil and really give them a good start. Right, because this is considered a compost. So a right. lot of the compost need to be mixed in with your, your existing soil. As existing an amendment, soils. so to speak, right. right? To get in there and kind of help that soil get started. Um, we also like to use, whenever we're planting new plantings, we're gonna use uh, their biotone. Okay. Um, that's where we're gonna put actually in the pot, like in the hole where you plant them. One of the great things about Espoma soil too is that resillable opening right. of Velcro. Which is great. Which is great because I like to keep this on hand all the time. So if we're, we're planting annuals out front here, we've mixed our potting soil, we've added some of that amendment. We'll dig the holes now where we're actually gonna put our annuals. I always like to kind of mix just a handful of right. the biotone in, and that's gonna go all around the outside roots of the plant. And that's what, like I said earlier, is gonna set them up for success throughout the season. Right. You know, we, we talked about these soils, you know, there's a couple other mixes too. You know, there's a potting mix and a raised, raised bed mix that right. they're doing also, but all, all of their soils have the mycorrhizae in common, right? Right, so we're, we're no matter what you're using it for, it's really gonna give those roots that start that they need um, to make sure that they're doing well all summer and through the fall. Right, and that's, that's kind of what sets Espoma apart from a lot of the other brands that Absolutely. are out there, is having that mycorrhizae throughout their entire, entire line of products. Yeah, we are so excited to have it this year. It's already been selling great. I keep ordering more because our, our customers are so excited to have it. Right. Yeah, and with the combination of their great already fertilizers that we have and that soils, you know, these plantings are really going to take off and have the healthiest plants you can get. I am so excited for this summer. You know, so if you want more information on, you know, any of this Boma products, make sure you come down here to Bauman Farms and check out the great line of products that they have. Or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to the website. So, Brian, you know, oh. we're anxious to get out in the yard and it's great to see a great product. Right, we got some plants in today, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us, yeah. today, Brian. Recently, we showed you how to plant a fruit tree. Now today, we're gonna to take our fruit tree. This one happens to be an espalier fruit tree, which we're gonna train along these wires. So today, we're gonna to run these wires and show you how to do that. So Judy's gonna show us the first steps of what we need to do. So it's not too hard. You need a drill and you need a level because you wanna make sure that the wires are level to the tree so that your branches are straight. And because this is a slope, you really need that level because you can't just measure from the ground. So we already put this wire in and if you can see that we put the wire just a little bit higher than this branch. So then when you wire it to that, it'll go nice and straight and it won't be reaching or it won't be too low and it'll just be right on. So I got my drill going, I already have my measurement. I'm gonna drill this hole. And I have a really good trick for you to get this eye bolt into the post is you use a screwdriver as a lever. And so you thread it through and then it helps you get some really good pressure while you're tightening it into the post. And now that we have our eye bolts you know, secured to the post, you know, I also wanted to point out that the eye bolt that we're using has a big spacing here. So what the spacing will do is it gets the tree as it grows, it will space it away from the fence or from the post. So it gives it a little bit more room for the air circulation back behind the branching 
or as the tree grows and expands, gives us some room. Then the next step is to secure the wire. So I'm just using this wire and it's really pretty easy. You just want to attach it and then make some loops to secure it. And we're using wire instead of twine because we want it to last more than one season. Now that I have it secured on my side, I'm gonna give the wire to Ryan and he's gonna finish it up. So we're gonna run our wiring across the back here. And what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a turnbuckle. And what this will do is we'll hook it to this and we'll be able to tighten our wire to make it nice and tight. So we're gonna take our uh, clippers here. The Felcos are nice because they do have this nice little notch in the back for cutting wire. And so we're gonna kind of measure out here, kind of put our turnbuckles in the same area. We're gonna cut this. And now that we have our wire cut, we're gonna attach it to our turnbuckle. We'll just kind of feed it through. And just like on the other end, we're gonna twist this around just to secure it. And then we'll use another piece of wire to hook from the eye bolt to the tree. So now that we have our wire hooked up to our turnbuckle, we can use our turnbuckle to tighten the wire and make it nice and taut. So, you know, these were all the way screwed out. So what we'll do as our turn buckle is we twist this metal piece. And what that does is it pulls these screws in together and that's what will tighten both sides of our turn buckle. Now that the wires are attached, it's time to attach the branches to the wire. So this branch is really a lot longer than the other side. So we're gonna trim it so it actually sends some energy to this other branch. And we're gonna find a bud that's on the upper side of the branch for the next growth on it. So I'm gonna trim it right here. And then I have some stretchy tape, this green stretchy tape, and I'm gonna tie it to the branch to the wire. And we use this stretchy tape because we don't want to use wire because it'll actually um, cut into the branch and then you damage the branch. So the stretchy tape is nice and soft. And I'm just going to do like a double knot and it's all secure. So now that we have the branch tied off, you know, as the tree continues to grow, this branch will continue to grow this way, and we'll just keep attaching it as it grows. Eventually, as this gets more uh, secure on its own, we'll be able to remove some of these older ties, but we'll want to make sure that we continue to train the tree along with wiring. So now we've talked to you how to plant the tree and how to secure it in, as an espalier. So really, you can have a lot of success for your own trees in your own yard. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world-famous Alsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe.
I'm out here at Rogerson Clematis Gardens. I'm with Linda. Linda, it is Clematis time. It they is. They are coming up. We're seeing them in the garden centers. The plant sales are back. We're out shopping for Clematis. But then you have some tricks as to what we should be looking for when we pick one out. Right. Um, for all the flashy flowers and all the vining top growth, it's really the root system that gets you started. And a lot of uh, I think it kind of throws people off, but a lot of mail order clematis are shipping their clematis now and they cut off the top growth to just inches, but you're getting this fabulous root system. So you have to imagine the same situation in a pot right. when you're buying them. So this is a clematis, um, this is pink flamingo and top growth, it's even gonna bloom, but we see no roots at the drainage holes. So this one isn't for sale yet. So it's too too small, and is, is yeah. there, there a risk of, of but, damage to try to plant something? Well, like? it just isn't going to take off as well, and there's going to be transplant shock. You, me, experienced gardeners, and brand new gardeners, all of us alike, we're going to damage the roots to one degree or another, especially if you have to wrestle it out of a pot with a cleated stake. So one of our local wholesalers packages their clematis this way. But look at the roots coming out, the bottom of the drainage holes. You know, this plant is ready to go. So you just reduce your plant transplant shock and you have better luck if you've got a nice full root system. Because, okay. you know, you're going to lose some feeder roots and you can't help it. Right. So this plant is from a local wholesaler. It is in gorgeous shape. It's budding up who we have here, Jillian Blades. But the one thing that this wholesaler does that is worrisome is that he uses raw bark chips as a um, protector for the time release uh, green pellets that are underneath for fertilizer. for fertilizer. So he doesn't want to wash that out when he's watering. So he, he, his nursery is sort of up in the woods and he's got all these chips, but they're raw. Okay. Which means as they break down in the soil, they're going to sequester nitrogen as their breaking down process that really this plant would like to have. Okay. Would like to have that nitrogen. And the other thing is, this is great slug habitat. <laughs> uh, and so once in a while, um, so when we get his plants in, if they're right off the truck, we go ahead and sell them. But if they're gonna hang around, then we have scraped the chips off of this one and uh, put some of our crushed granite that's just number two chicken grit. You right. can buy it at Wilco concentrates any feed store, Linton feed store. And this one um, was a little bit problematic because we didn't like the color of the foliage. So we thought, this is, this, we know this, we grow this in the Rogers and Clematis garden. We know Red Star is a great plant. These don't look great. Uh, and so we've decided that in addition to taking the chips off and stuff, yeah. we're also gonna hang on to these for a little while. It's got a new shoot coming, so we're actually probably gonna cut it all the way off. Um, this doesn't seem to be as well rooted as this, this one is, so you know, we had a, a few of these left okay. over from the big Heartlandia sale last weekend, and we're gonna hang on to them for a little while, and then we'll bring them out for sale again. And the um, herbaceous perennial, Clematis are coming up too, so you should have a nice tuft of foliage and again seeing roots around the base of the plant. And this is one that we um, bought in. This is Diamantina. We got these from a supplier as little what we call liners. So these were in about three inch deep, two by two inch pots when we got them last July. And so this is an older. Uh, plant. It's been in the pot since July, and look at it. It's right. gorgeous. So you're and we've making got sure roots. that you know you're you're holding them on long enough because you mm -hmm. want your mm -hmm. your customers to be successful right. when they get home some, when they transfer. Some retailers will get their plants in January and be selling them in May, and ours we've had ours, you know, twice that long. Right. And and we pinch them a lot. Um, it's hard to teach the volunteers. Yeah, I know it's not got new growth. Pinch it back right. because we want this bushiness. And and this is Diamantina. It's about to bloom in your garden. It is going to be this way. It's going to bloom from the ground up, even though it's going to end up about five feet tall. It just makes a column of these incredible 
double mauvey lavendery flowers. You know, and so these are you know some great tips on what to look for when we're doing it, and you know for people that want to come up here and purchase your clematis because you guys right. do an amazing job. Right, we're going to be at Garden Palooza, on uh, and then we're also starting our on-site sales uh, season, and so we're starting Saturday the 9th. We'll be here from 10 until 2, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 10 until 2. We have our sales terrace open. We've got trained volunteers out there to answer your questions for you. And you can even bring flowers. If you've got a clematis and you're not sure what it is, bring a blossom out. We'll see if we can figure out what it is. And we just have a lot of fun out there selling plants. And you guys have a wealth of information on your website as far as you know, right. transplanting, growing, and tips for what you can do with your clematis that's already in your ground from your years Right, past. you can go right on to clematis care and we have information sheets. Like which ones, some people say, oh, they all need shade. Well, we have a whole sheet that tells you which ones like it hot and which ones can be in fairly dense shade and which ones do best in containers and on and on and right. on. You know, so if you're in the market for a clematis or have one already in your yard, make sure you come out and see Linda, talk to your staff, visit their website, or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their site and you can learn all about what you need to look for to pick out the best clematis for your yard. Thanks for having us, Linda. Thanks, Ryan. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Garden Palooza is back. Join us on April 9th at our new location at Bauman's Farm and Garden. See over 30 plant growers and garden vendors. There's free parking and free admission. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 9th at Bauman's Farm and Garden in Woodburn. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. So here we are, it's late winter. You know, we're getting ready uh, you know, for that spring is right around the corner and we're kind of thinking about our vegetable garden. So you know, what better way to get an early mm -hmm. start on that is to take our raised garden beds and kind of convert it into a miniature greenhouse. Yeah, and it really is pretty simple. What we did was we have this raised bed and so we got this PVC from the local hardware store and then we also put some um, stakes down, put some really heavy duty ones so that it'll hold with the wind and you gently bend. Now be careful because this is going to be straight when you get it and you want to gently bend it into this hoop. And if you give me a hand there, Ryan, and we're just going to slide it right on top of these stakes. Okay. And then slide the other one in. Ah, these are well-trained hoops. Good. Got, our, got our hoops. <laughs> and then we can cover it with our, our, our plastic. So we picked up this hardware plastic at the hardware store. So it's a heavier, kind of a six mil mm -hmm. plastic deck, kind of like a greenhouse. And we use a clear, so it'll let the, let the light in. And you don't want to use the black because we need, we need <laughs> no, you electricity. Want <laughs> but then we'll get ready to cover this and we'll show you how that all works. All right.
So now that we have this all clipped and we've sealed in our raised bed, what this will do is allow the light and the sunshine to warm up the soils. And by having the warmer soils and that protected heat in there, it'll help the seeds germinate, or if we have new seedlings, it'll help those take, take root and get started and give us a jump start. Yeah, and you know, this isn't permeable. It's not gonna get any rain in it. So you're gonna have to check it and make sure you water it maybe about once a week. And on those warm summer days that we have, make sure you open up the ends or you can open up the side and make sure you get a coolness in there. You get the wind going in there so that the plants are more happy. And once we get through spring and the, the summer or the evening temperatures are warm enough that we're beyond the frosts, we can remove the plastic and you save it for later. And then once again in the fall, when our temperatures start to drop again and you want to protect your, your end of the season harvest, you can put it back on to protect your plants. You know, this is a great little project to help you get a jump start on your summer vegetable garden. Now many of us have spring flowering bulbs in our yard, either tulips or daffodils. And as we get towards the kind of the end of their bloom season, we're left with kind of these old flowers. A lot of us are wondering kind of what do we do with those? So with these, you can go through and take off the old flower stalks. You, know, you can follow this all the way down to the bottom and snip that off and just cut that down. But then we're left with all the foliage. So some people go through mistakenly and cut all that foliage back now, or they'll go through and kind of tie, tie them up and wrap them up to make them look a little prettier. But we actually don't want to do any of that. We want to leave that foliage all the way up because what it does is it sucks all the nutrients back out of the foliage to go down and feed the bulb to make a bigger, healthier bulb and more flowering from next year. So after you're all done, you can deadhead, leave the foliage up for about a month or so till it turns yellow and brown on its own, completely wipe it out, and you'll have a healthy and happy bulb for next year. So that's our tip of the week. For other tips and for more information, you go to gardentime.tv. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We're proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and I am here today to tell you about one of my absolute favorite trees. This is Cupressus Blue Ice, or Blue Ice Cypress. And all the time people come to the farm and they ask me for a quick growing tree, they don't want to wait forever, I'm impatient too. They want something that doesn't make a mess, they want something they don't have to water all the time. And honestly, this tree has all of those attributes and more. It is, one of the things I like about it most too is that it's drought tolerant. I don't have to keep watering all the time. Once it's established, you're done. You don't have to deal with it again. And it looks great year round. It has beautiful pine cones and it comes in a whole wider range of colors. Besides the blue rice, I found some other varieties. Limelight, Carolina Sapphire, and there's more. All of those we have in stock right now at the farm. If you are looking for that perfect tree that doesn't take a lot of maintenance, looks good year round, and is easy to take care of, these guys are just right for you. Well, I'm out here at Al Sherwood, I'm with Terry. And Terry, you know, as the weathers are starting to change, we're looking to move outside in our yard. You know, we've been cooped up for the winter, but there's some great things that we can do outside. Absolutely, and everybody right now, it's such a priority for them to be outside in their outdoor living space. And I think the most important thing is you really wanna dream what that perfect patio is gonna look like for you. What makes you happy? What makes you comfortable? What will you right. enjoy? Um, and then determine, you know, what size is my patio? You know, when you start creating it, you have to, it's really important to measure. Measure, measure, and for example, this is a large patio, and it is about um, the size that will fit a sectional, 
a couple of lounge chairs and a fire pit. Not everybody has that size. Right. But um, you can do some really great things with color, with design, um, even you know with outdoor things like rugs and outdoor art and pillows to pop the color. But it's, it's kind of determining what type of material, what kind of color you want to go with on your patio. Right. And it's, you know, we, we look at it, it's like, we probably need to know how we're going to use our space, right? right? I mean, we have the sectionals in here that's great for lounging, but sometimes we may want to just do dining. Right, right. right. And we have dining tables that would match this. Right. Um, here at Al's, we sell everything by the piece so that people can mix and match and do what they want. Right. Um, you might want an all-weather wicker dining set to go with this. You might want an aluminum set that matches the color. Right. Because, you know, because our, our yard and our patios, are they're an extension of our home. Exactly. Right? It's, not, it's not a separate thing. It's how right. we can you know, combine all of these together to make this u usable space. And right. you're able to do that here at Al's by, you know, like you said, you, know, you have the matching, the artwork and things right. that can be outside. Right, exactly. I mean, thinking about the design of your patio can be just an extension of your indoor living. Um, these are home decor items that we have brought outside. Right. Uh, so, you know, you can carry that theme of whatever you like from inside to out. Yeah. You know, as I'm, you know, sitting in this amazingly com comfortable chair, you know, yes. we, we get in there. You said there's a little trick to this chair. That this you get chair is a reclining chair. Give it a try, really? Ryan. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about comfort. I mean, right? that's really what a lot of people are going for in their patio. They want to go out in a, after a busy day and really just relax on their right. patio. This gives you the opportunity it, to do that. It even swivels. It yeah. does. It does. It swivels and it, it reclines. Right. So. You know, so we have you know this kind of setup for for a large area. But if we don't have an area that's this large in our in our yard, maybe a little smaller spaces, you have those kind of setups here too. Absolutely. Let's go take Let's a look. Let's go take a look at that. Now this is an example, you know, totally different than the one we were just in, but it's a much smaller space. Right, it is. And also not just a smaller space, but different material. Yes. So this is made out of a, an aluminum. But if, if you try the, the chairs, they're a little smaller lounge chair, but still is comfortable. Right. So, and again, that kind of goes back to that comfort. Everybody wants that comfort. So we've, we've got also added a lot of color uh, with the accent pillows, with the rug, and with the umbrella. Right, and it's uh, and so speaking of an umbrella, you can create a, this a room right. anywhere in your yard by having an umbrella. Exactly, like this. exactly. This umbrella, um, not only one room, but you can create two rooms that you can cover with this umbrella. It it has a 360 oh, degree wow. turn. So if you wanted to move it over here and put it over your dining set, you could easily do that right. without even a, a moment's notice. And it looks like it's very easy to control and maneuver just like a little foot pedal and spin, spin around. Hey, I can do it, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and this would be another one that comes, comes in the colors that you can match with your decor. Absolutely, absolutely. It's nice to get the neutral colors in your cushions for your frames, but it, it is nice to have those pops of color. Right. And if you, if you get the umbrella and you decide in a couple of years you want to change out the color, you can even just change the fabric. Right. You know, and this is the example of the medium space. But you know, some of us have you know just small little balcony areas or front porch areas, right. and you even have solutions for that. I absolutely do. Uh, let's so go let's take go take a look, look at a small yeah. section. Now we're into a smaller spot yet. You know, so this is you know you're considered your small section, mm -hmm. and it's an entirely different material yet again. Yes, it is. Yes, and it's actually. Um, about an eight by eight space. So it's really would fit on any small patio. Um, the material is 100% recycled material, well, excuse me, material, um, but it's not gonna scratch. So that's sort of right. one of the nice things about it. And the care and maintenance is super easy. All you do is just wipe it down and you're good to go. Right, so. and just because you have a smaller space doesn't need, mean you need to give up the luxury or, or the feel. I mean, right. these are incredibly comfortable. Very comfortable chairs. chairs. Yeah, absolutely. And they're, um, they come with an amazing warranty. They're made here in the US and um, they're gonna last you longer than you might even want them for. So right. yeah, you'll enjoy them for a long time. And you even have like a smaller set yet of even another material. Yes, I do. It's actually made out of a wood material. Um, here at Alice, we carry four main materials, and this we've looked at three of them already, the all-weather wicker, the aluminum, and, and then this 100% recycled material. 
um, wood is the last one, and we have these small bistro sets that you could put on a front porch. Right. And not only that, they fold and they store so easily. Right, which, which, which is nice for yes. that less room. Mm -hmm. you know, so you know, as we're you know, moving outside and we have all of our rooms, you know, what are just the basic things that we need to know before we come in and take, take a look? Right, right. And just to kind of recap, you, you always want to measure. I think that is so helpful in making your decisions for your patio is, is making sure that you measure your space. We've looked at three different spaces at three different sizes. If you come in, um, you can buy things by the piece. You don't have to buy a set. So you can get two of these chairs instead right. of four. Um, but it's important to know what the size is. What colors do you like? And then what design do you like? Do you like that modern look? Do you like more of a warmer traditional look? Um, and, and those are all things that help you when you're, you're finally creating the final design for your dream patio. Right. You know, we're out here at the Sherwood store, which has, has the largest selection here, but all of your stores are going to have some of these amazing pieces in there. They do. They do. Um, it, it's just a, a little more limited selection at the right. other stores, but here in Sherwood is where we have the greatest display room floor, and so you can see all of the options here. Um, if there's a, another store that's close by, please go in there because that's absolutely, you can see some of the, the best designs in right. those stores also. Um, or you can go to our website or we have lots of social media that you can visit as well. Right. You know, so if you're looking to elevate your outdoor space, make sure you come down here to Al's out in Sherwood or any of their other stores. You know, visit their website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So Terry, it's been a pleasure to get all of this information. I'm looking forward to the weather changing and getting to be outside in my yard. Me right too. <laughs>